Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the income elasticity of demand. The income elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded for goods or service to a change in income. Well, simply put, we're looking at the change in quantity, change in Q, as the change in income occurs. So as you change in income, up or down, how would that affect your demand on the change of the quantity? It helps understand how sensitive is consumer demand to a change in income. So if there is a change in income, how is that income going to change the quantity demanded? Now, this computation is important on many, on many levels. It's important for businesses, policymakers, and economists. Simply put, this ratio would help predict the consumer behavior. What we're trying to find out is if income went up, for a particular group of people, how would that increase or decrease in income for that matter affect the change of quantity for a certain product? If I'm a business, I want to know if income overall goes up, how is that gonna affect my product? Or if income goes down, how is that how is it gonna affect my product? And this is what we'll be discussing in this session. So let's go ahead and get started with looking at the formula for income elasticity. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The formula is the change, the percentage change in quantity demanded, the percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in income. And I hope, I hope this is not a surprised formula for you. If we looked at price elasticity of of demand of supply basically a similar very very similar formula same thing with cross elasticity remember the quantity is always in the numerator so this ratio this income elasticity can be positive and can be positive usually positive for normal goods we're going to see what normal goods is and we're going to understand what does a positive mean it means when you compute this ratio the answer is positive this ratio could be negative and usually it's negative for inferior goods or it could be zero Zero means the demand approximately remain the same with the change in income, basically no effect. So it's, pro it's gonna provide insight in the nature of a good or a service. Also, by looking at this, whether it's positive or negative, it's gonna help us whether the goods we are dealing with is a normal, inferior, or luxury, for that matter. We'll look at all of those. Starting with normal goods, what do we mean by normal goods? Normal goods are goods for which our demand increases as our income increases. So any goods, anything you'd like to buy more of as your income goes up, as your income goes up, okay? If you, if your demand, the queue for that product goes up, we call it normal goods. Now, for example, if you have more money, you, you might want to buy a, a better car, a more luxurious car. You're gonna spend at a high-end places. This is what we mean by normal goods, okay? so. In this case, the income elasticity of demand is positive, greater than zero, and we're gonna measure this. For example, a good example will be luxury cars. If a person income increases by 10%, and as a result, I mean, a person's income means the overall society's income or, or particular group of people, and the quantity demanded for luxury goods increase by 20%, we say the income elasticity of demand is 20, the change in quantity divided by the change's income is two. This indicate that luxury cars are income elastic. It means as you make more money, as you make more money, you want to buy more of that goods. So your income only increased by 10%, the demand increased by 20%. So as your income goes up, you demand more of that product. If that's the case, it's normal goods. Most goods are normal goods because most goods, assuming you want to buy more of them, they are called normal normal goods this is what we mean by normal goods now let's talk about inferior goods inferior goods are those for which demand decreases as income increases so as your income goes up 
your demand for that product goes down. The income elasticity is negative, less than zero, it's, it will be negative. An example will be a low cost, pro, low cost product. Now my classic example, when I learned this about inferior goods versus normal goods, I still remember my, my econ professor, Dr. Bajwa. He said that as you make more money, you're gonna be buying more of steaks and lobsters and less of eating less at McDonald's. And back then, I loved McDonald's. I said, no way. I was a recent immigrant to the United States. I tell the story every time I talk about inferior goods. I say, no way. As I make more money, I'm going to eat more at McDonald's. That's not true. As you make more money, you will stay away from places like McDonald's. For one thing, it's not healthy. Two, you get sick of it after a few days. But back then, you know, I did not eat... Sh I did not eat on a regular basis at it, but once you can, you'll get sick of it really quickly. So McDonald's will be considered inferior goods in a sense that as your income goes up, you will demand less of it. So if a person increases by 10%, but the quantity demanded for some generic product increases by only 5%. So as your income goes up, as your income goes up, the quantity demanded for that product is negative, goes down. Then the, co the coefficient is negative. 0.5. This negative value suggests that the generic product are income inelastic, as the rise in income leads to the de a decrease in demand. Again, this is a classic example of inferior goods. Also, we have to look at the goods from a perspective of necessities versus luxuries. Necessities and luxuries can also influence how the income, elastic the income elasticity of demand. Necessities, and we're talking here about food, food or basic clothing ten, tend to have income elasticity between zero and one, indicating that the quantity demanded increases but at a slower rate than income. So usually if you have, if, if the coefficient is between zero and one, it is positive, but it's not growing at a, at a fast rate. But if the income is greater than one, it's growing at a faster rate. So when it comes to food, even if you make more money, how much are you going to buy in food or in clothing? as long as the clothing is considered necessity. Not that much. Now you might you might start to buying brand names, that's totally different, but basic clothing, it's gonna be the same. Basic food, it's gonna be the same. Luxuries, on the other hand, have income elasticity greater than one, indicating that the demand for those increase at a faster rate. As your income increases, the demand for those increase at a faster rate. For example, if a person's income rises by 10% and the demand for vacations increase by 30%, the income elasticity will be equal to 3. Suggestion that a lot like vacation consider a luxury. But if your income increases by 10%, you are not going to increase your food intake by 30%. But your spending on vacation might increase by 30%. Let's take a look at a few other examples to just kind of complete the picture here. Suppose we have a market for smartphone and we want to determine the income elasticity for the smartphone and let's assume the average income is 50,000 per year and the average quantity demanded for now is 10,000 units 10,000 cell phones okay let's assume there's an increase in income from 50 to 60,000 the economy picked up and everyone's average income increased from 50 to 60 well what's that increase from 50 to 60 that's a $10,000 I will take the difference divided by the original and that's a 20% increase. However, the, 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 the quantity demanded for the smartphone was 13,000. So that's 3,000, the difference is 3,000 divided by the initial starting point, 10,000. So the increase is 30,000. Immediately, what do we see? We see that the increase in the quantity demanded is faster than the increase in income, the percentage. So the quantity demanded increased by 30%. This is how we compute this, the change then divide by the initial value. The change in income, the change divided by the initial value of, of 50,000 is 20%. When we compute income elasticity, we find out change in quantity, percentage of change in quantity divided by the percentage change of income. The answer is 1.5. What does 1.5 mean? One thing, it's positive, it's elastic, and it's more than one. It's more than one. The income elasticity of demand, since the value is greater than one, we conclude that smartphones are luxury goods. Okay, This means that a 1% increase lead to a 1.5% increase in the quantity demanded of smartphone. Okay, There's a strong, relatively strong response of demand in changes in income. Now, why? How, how do we use this information? This is valuable for companies that manufactures and market those smartphones. 
so they can understand the consumer behavior. So if they see our incomes going up, they might want to increase their advertising. Now let's take a look at an example for an inferior good. And let's assume we are dealing with a cheap brand of instant noodles. And when I was in college, I used to buy those in the dozens because I did not have money. Each package would cost me 25 cent. Now, let's say the average income of the consumer increased by 15% from 25,000 to 28,750. However, as their income increases, the demand for cheap instant noodles decreased by 10%. So let's see how it works. The quantity demanded went from 5,000 to 4,500. It decreased by 10%. And their income increased by 15. So the quantity demanded went down by 10 income increased by 15%. We're looking at an inferior good now. Let's compute this. Income elasticity of demand is negative 0.66. Well, this tells us that the demand for cheap noodles is income inelastic and negative, meaning that it's an inferior good. The demand decreases, okay? The demand decreases as the income increases, as the income increases, and it's less than zero. It's less than zero it's the demand for the product is decreasing. Okay, now bear in mind, because the absolute value of the answer is 0 0.66 less than one. Okay, less than one, the absolute, you know, negative 66, the absolute value of that is 0.66, which is less than one. The change is not as strong as the change in income. So yes, we have less demand for this, but it's not, as, the, the change is not as high. Okay, so yes, we are consuming less of cheap instant noodles but not you know you know if it was negative two or negative three then the change would have been more uh directional but it's not it's it's a slight change it's a slight change yes you cut down on your noodles but by not that much okay maybe if your income goes up further if the income of this group of people goes up further and further you know double to fifty thousand then you might cut down substantially on noodles maybe the the uh, the five thousand packets would only have one thousand of them that 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 are being purchased. So anything that's between negative one and one. So if you have zero, negative one, and plus one, so there will be a change, but the change, the directional, is not it, it, it's not strong. Okay, anything above one or below negative one, well, the change is will be relatively strong, relatively strong. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs that's going to help you understand this topic better. The only reason you are going to understand it is to test yourself. Test yourself through MCQs so you are ready for the exam day when you are facing econ questions, economic questions on the CPA exam. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.